Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. So I put up a live racing video recently and people saw the crazy numbers that the uh, Jessica Red is able to put up as far as EVO points and asked me a question about what is really low PP high EVO? Um, how does it work and what does it mean? All right, so I'm going to try to explain some of this to you in this video. Low performance point high EVO is not just having a lower point here and a super high point there, you have to min-max everything when it comes to live racing, which means minimum parts upgrade, maximum performance, meaning you want the car to run the best it can at the lowest level of upgrades, and sometimes switching out a particular part can make a big difference. But that's not the entire story. Why low performance point high EVO cars have an advantage is really in the way they lobby. Let's take a look at this car, and I'm going to use a Dutch Boys Hot Rods Camaro as the alternative, and you can really get a feel for the comparison of how they work. So the Jesco Red, Draco Red here, is actually not running full Evo, mainly because it's unshiftable. So what I did is I lowered it um, to put it at a dyno of 9.140. But even given that, we're running only 643 points here on upgrades, which for a tier 5 car is very minimal. And because of that, this car has no business being in 9.1 lobby. It is far too quick for what it should be able to do. And that is because of this. When these cannot go up, the compensating factor are the EVO points and this car has one of those crazy EVO tunes that allows it to run much much faster than what normally would make sense in a 9.1 lobby as a result this car is adjusted substantially uh, from what its normal target number would be so we saw again that the dyno is a 9.140 so Let's hold on to that thought, and let's take a look at the other car. All right, and here we have the other half of the equation, what is normal tuned Dutch Boys Hot Rod Camaro. Again, I tuned this car a little bit with some upgrades without focusing on minimizing the performance points, but rather uh, focusing on a target number, utilizing and leveraging some of the strong stage sixes so that the car can do more than what it is technically dynoing. This is your standard um, dyno tune of 9.550, but capable of running a little bit faster. What is in some circles called a slight down tune. Okay, it's not a dyno buster tune. It's not using massive EVO drop to do it. This car just simply has the ability to beat dyno a little bit depending on where you put the final drive. It can be dyno by a lot, don't get me wrong, but we're not pushing for that. We're just here to beat dyno just enough. Beat it by how much? Beat it by enough to run, basically, what the Jesco Red would be able to run a 9.1. So this is a 9.1 setup on a 9.5 tune. But this car has basically normal amount of performance point for a 9.5 lobby, not an advantageous level, but normal. A 693 car in the 9.5 lobby is actually at a slight disadvantage because if you think about it, a NSXR with full Elite, and Elite puts a whole nother point into the equation, but we'll talk about that in a separate video. Basically, a 674 upgrade level car like the NSXR with full Elite would match make into the same lobby this car would. But what about our crazy Jesco? What happens if I go into lobby with that Jesco Red and this Dutch Boys Camaro? Let's find out. Okay, we're back on the Jesco Red account. Let's go ahead and go into the live lobby and let's see what happens. We have a 9.1 car and a 9.5 car. What happens when I go into live though? Can I find the other car? Because these cars have different level of upgrades. It looks like I'm having a little issue here. Uh, let me see. Oh, we're here. Okay. Um, so let's take a look. Where is my other car? Is it here? It is. There it is. 9.5 car has matched with a 9.1 car. 
Does that make sense? No, but how did that happen? Well, that goes back to what I was talking about earlier with a low performance point high EVO car having what I call a lobby advantage. The lobby advantage is extreme with the Jesco Red because it's an extreme car when it comes to low performance point high EVO. Normal cars will not be this crazy, so you will not have this much of a gap between your Dutch Boys Camaro and your Jesco Red. Now I'm going to run somebody because I'm seeing these guys in here. That tells me this is definitely 9.5 lobby. There's no way those NSXRs are going to run anything close to 9.1. At least they shouldn't. Um, I've been surprised before by surprising cars. But um, as a general rule, if you're looking at the NSXR in a lobby, you're probably in the 9.5 range lobby. Um, it looks like our friends here with the NSXRs are not connecting uh, or they just don't want to race me. But most likely that was just a non-connection issue. Okay, but oh, here's a challenger. Let's take him on. Let's use him to gauge where we are. But again, not difficult to run um, a Jesco Red slower than Dino and still get somewhere with this because, well, quite frankly, it's such a fast car that you know, I'm I'm on a 91 dyno, mind you. So I should not have any problem staying way the hell ahead of the guy um, and lose because I slow down a lot. But let's take a look at his runtime. That's what I care about. 9.8. Okay, wait, that was a um, was that a wow? Okay, so the the okay, <laughs> so so the. <laughs> The initial um, thumbnail in this car wasn't even the same car. It was a Valkyrie track pack. That's why it got a lot higher top speed at the end than I expected. All right, I'm going to play a little more conservatively this time and not do what I did earlier and try to basically keep my lead uh, more substantial. Okay, and I'll watch him catch up. And that's that. I lose again. I don't like this track. It's very hard to c judge the... Um, judge the spot at the end here with this uh, Jesco Red. When you're the lead car slowing down, usually knowing exactly where the end is on the track is important. So this time I'll just, I mean, I'm running 510 slower than Dino. I'll just run a 9.4 this time just so I don't have to lose. But again, as you can see, he's probably pushing his car a little more, but he's certainly not a 9.1 car. Right, this time I'm just not going to slow down as much until the very end, and let's see what happens. Okay, so again, I didn't try to push the car for the best runs. 9.469, 9.557, easy peasy. Okay, now once I get the hang of where to downshift, I can easily control this car in this lobby um, and not lose. So that's the whole point here, and here it is, my other car, which is actually... Um, facing an opponent at the moment, but remember this car dynos 9.5, but runs 9.1. The problem here is that, of course, that car can win, uh, but each time I win, I am risking bumping that car uh, further up the rankings, and that's a problem. You don't want to win all the time with this car because it'll push you out. In fact, let's go take a look at that car racing. Okay, so we're back here now uh, focused on my second account um, Camaro, the uh, Dutch Boys Hot Rods Camaro. Here's my other account's car. Again, it's in the same lobby. Let's go ahead and race some people in here with this car. Now, you know with the Jesco Red, it's all about how slow can I go. Uh, with the Dutch Boys Hot Rod, the problem is more how not to go too fast, okay? You can definitely go fast. I mean, hell, I can go 9.1 in here if I want to. But remember, once you run faster than dyno, you're now risking the potential of getting your car bumped. Okay, nobody wants to race the Camaro. That's not surprising. Um, many people have lost money to Camaros. All right, looks like it's going to be racing myself or somebody else that doesn't connect. Oh, maybe he'll connect. Let's try him. Can we get a race here? Boy, it's getting rough out here. Oh, here we go. All right, so 
with the Dutch boys Camaro again, it's it's a matter of not running too fast. This could be a dis. Uh, okay, good, 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 good. I was gonna say this could be a disconnect if it's taking that long. Okay, so Dutch boys Camaro. The difference is, of course, my dyno is nine five, and I'm in here, and I don't want to run too far under that to win because naturally that would hurt me, right? Now this car is ridiculously fast as well. Off it goes. And again, I didn't play as conservatively because it's hard to judge the, the finish line here. Uh, but 9.6 against a 9.7. So it's a winning car at 9.5 dyno against things in the lobby. But again, if you run up against the Jesco Red, I would have to run 3 4 tenths faster than my dyno to beat that Jesco Red or just to match it. And what will happen is you end up being bumped. So it's not so easy to fight cars that are low performance point high EVO. That is why the low performance point high EVO cars are so deadly in live. And that is why I keep saying they're some of the best cars right now when it comes to live racing. All right, let's go back and talk a little bit about other um, aspects of low performance point high ratio because it's never always that simple. Okay, so we're back in the garage and let's take a look at another um, aspect of this and finalize this video. So what about in between, right? We had a more extreme of one end and then we had kind of the average of the other end. Remember the Dutch boys Camaro had a 693 performance point tune. Here we have the regular Jesco with 680, 2040 and it is also dynoing at 9.3 hmm so this is a in between of the two right the dutch boy has more performance point even less evo this car has less evo and less performance i mean i'm sorry more evo than the dutch boy but less evil than the draco red also more performance point but how does this car lobby compare to the draco red at 9.3 dyno does it have a lobby advantage? The answer to that is really not really. Um, because once you hit above 674 in the nine second lobbies, I find that generally speaking, your lobby advantage disappears. However, that does not mean this car will not ever win in this lobby. It can do quite well. It just lobbies to most cars that are faster than say, at least those NSXRs. Here's another uh, possible car that is uh, similar in the way it's structured. However, same deal. Uh, these cars all have some level of low performance point high evil tune, but it's all relative to each other. So really to find the best spot for any given car uh, takes a little bit of tweaking and testing. You're not just going to take a car, say, all right, 650, 1,800 must be low performance point high EVO. It also relies on exactly what the car can run because a 2,000 EVO car that only runs 12s, it still has an advantage, but it's not going to be as good an advantage as, say, a similar performance point car, similar EVO car, but it actually does 11.8. So, you know, it, it, it basically, you still have to leverage the best parts you can, make sure that the parts are the ones that do the most for the least level of upgrades and that will always make sure you have the best chance to have your car uh, have under the best control and win those races so here we go let's see what the opponent ran I didn't really slow down much 9.4 again um, that's a Supra in the 9.5 range he may not have beat Dino he may have beaten Dino a little we're not sure but same, same deal here. Even though this has higher performance point, it still has decent EVO. And at least in its lobby range, it is still somewhat um, running an advantage against other cars. Now, it may not run an advantage against car like, for example, the um, Absolute, which also can tune very similar to the Jesco. But the Absolute actually is a little bit stronger in a slightly slower setup. Uh, but nonetheless... Okay, we have a lot of variations on what is low performance point high EVO and it's all relative to 
the cars you see in your lobby, it's not just you have a low performance point high EVO and that automatically makes sure you don't lose. It, it relies still on what lobby you're actually in, who else is in the lobby and how are they tuned. And it could be a very different situation depending on which cars you're running into. So there are no absolutes in live racing. Um, no one car is going to absolutely destroy everybody. But, you know, between having the low performance high EVO cars to what I call the dyno buster cars, you'll have a big range of various dyno cars all mis mismatched into the same lobby. You know, and in that situation, it's anybody's game when it comes to who's going to win and who's going to lose. And let's see how the absolute fares against me. It may very well pick up speed on the end here. And I can still beat them by controlling my run. So in this situation, the Jesco is a little bit better controllable than the absolute. Again, notice this is much closer to my dyno. In fact, that is slightly under my dyno versus um, the, the other car where I could run slower than dyno and win. And having a re-challenge probably means that he feels he can go even faster and possibly take me out. The difference here, of course, is I'm giving up a little bit of the um, performance point advantage to make sure my car can beat Dino. So this Jesco, the regular one, uh, is actually quite good. Okay, so I'm going to keep it slightly ahead of him as before. Yeah, I'm not swapping because... I'm doing a video here just testing different run numbers. So again, um, I'm pushing it a little harder and I still stay ahead of them. And that's all she wrote. However, I am running slightly under dyno and with the car like this where you have to run slightly faster, under meaning slightly faster to win, your chances of getting bumped is greater. Here we go, another Camaro. Now I can tell you this Camaro isn't gonna be running 680 performance points. He's probably closer to fully maxed and has some kind of uh, Evo drop tune to be in here. Let's see how fast he runs. But I am going to push him a little bit because my car can push to probably 8.9 if needed. Okay, so again, I'm on a 9.38 dyno, but I'm going to push a little bit just to see what happens. Oh, wait, he's way back there. Maybe I don't need to push so hard. Let me slow down. Okay. Wow, okay. So that surprised me. I was expecting him to really trash me down the track, but um, 9.6. Now, that just could mean that he has a basic tuned Camaro that max Evo out. He may actually have a 9.5 dyno. And I ran a 9.482 to beat him. And he probably ran a little bit slower than dyno. That car is actually hard to drive dyno if you don't have a down tune on it. It's a weird car like that. Okay, well, I think this more or less has... Um, seal my point here about the relative low performance point high EVO advantage and how it works. If it's still confusing to you, uh, do feel free to ask me questions. I'll see if I can clarify even further. But basically, what it is, is not just a specific point here or here. The real issue is that your actual performance right here is not normally reachable at that level. That is what makes a car have a lobby advantage. If your car has lower than average performance point for the lobby and higher than average evolution points or evo points for the lobby, it will have some degree of lobby advantage. However, no matter how extreme we go, lobby advantage does have a limit and you can't just make the car, and this car can go up to like 3300 uh, EVO points and do 8.7 dyno. However, it doesn't actually win there because the lobby advantage caps out. I'm still facing cars that can run 9.0 um, and I can't run 8.7 because the shifts are so crazy. So there's a limit to pushing the low performance point high EVO. You just want enough to kind of make sure you stay in the advantage range, but you don't have to push it always to the extremes. All right. Anyway, uh, that ends this video. Feel free to comment and ask questions. As always, if you like the video, leave a like. If you like my channel and would like to get notifications when I put up videos explaining things like this, subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll get those notifications. 
And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.